Talofa and aloha to all of you friends and family that are listening in right now. Isn't it amazing that through modern technology I could be there but yet not be there? I'm so honored and privileged to speak to you today on a subject that God has laid on my heart. I believe it's one that is so needed, not only in the world that we live in today, but even in the church, even in marriage. What is this subject? Well, we'll go into it right after the word. So pray with me, and then we'll go into the word. Father, I thank you so much that you are here in our midst. Lord, no matter what the situations are that people may be facing, no matter what the mindset is, I thank you that your word has the power to transcend all circumstances, all situations, all pains and ailments. And I ask you, dear God, that you would speak through my lips and think through my mind your words, not my words, but your words of simplicity and accuracy. And I pray, dear God, that the next 24 minutes, Father, would be a time of refreshing, a time of rebuilding, a time of reconciliation, and even a time of reconsidering where we are with you. I pray, dear God, that you would have your way now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Today, friends, I want to start a four-part series on the subject of hope. Can you all say hope? Hope is a force that is so misunderstood by many, and if they understood the power that this subject on hope has to give and to add to your spiritual stamina, to your endurance, you'd never give up. Many people have given up today because they've lost hope. Many have put hope in different things like their jobs, uh, relationships, finances, uh, land, whatever. And you know, the thing is, when those things are pulled out from under our feet, when we lose those things, we lose hope. But in this four-part series, I guarantee you that if you listen, if you take notes, if you write things down, if you get the CD, you're going to be able to retain one of the greatest forces that God has given to us, and it's a force called hope. I want to start off with this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. It's a very well-known scripture among the body of Christ. And it's an exhortation that Paul gave to the church in Corinth. He talks about what is known as the three Christian virtues. If you take one of the three away, then what happens is you have just a religion and you don't have power. What good is religion with no power? I want a religion. I want a relationship. I want a connection with God that promises me power. So what are these three virtues? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, I believe it's in your outline, it says, And now abide faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Notice the word now, and now. All three of these are in existence right now. Just because they are available right now doesn't mean it's operating in the lives of people. In fact, many people focus more on love. Some people focus more on faith. Hardly anyone ever talks about hope. What is hope? Well, this verse is not implicating, you know, that love is greater than faith and hope. All this verse is saying is the three you need, but you need to know how these three operate. Let me just try to break it down like this. Faith, that's the first virtue that's mentioned. Faith is like a GPS. In your car, if you have a GPS, you press the address, your destination, where you want to go. And then this global positioning satellite thing, it tells you uh, not only where you are, but it's going to tell you how to get there. That's what faith is. Faith will show you the destination. Faith helps you to keep your eyes on where you're going, not where you are. Now, hope is the vehicle that transports us there. You can have a fancy GPS system, you could have a beautiful car, but, if, but, it, but you know what? You've got to sit in that car and you've got to turn it on because it's that vehicle, which is hope, that's going to get you from where you are now to where you want to be. Um, now love, what is love? What, what, what role does love play? So we have the GPS, okay? We have the car. We know where we're going. We have the means to get there. But you know what? Love is like the fuel that gets you there. What is a beautiful car without gas? It's just going to be a sitting beautiful car. There's a lot of good Christians. There's a lot of uh, well-minded people. 
But you know what? Without the fuel of hope, our marriages will never get from point A to point B. Without the fuel of hope, you'll never get to putting feet to your dream. Many people have dreams. Many people have visions. And we talk about them. But you know what? We need to fill ourselves up with hope. Are you kind of getting it right now? Um, since 2007, I read a statistic that said this. The suicide rate skyrocketed. What pushed this rate over the scale? Well, unemployment since 2007 has reached an all-time high. And people's hope was in their jobs. So when they lost their jobs, they lost their hope. How do you know there's still hope? Here's a question that you ask. Are you still breathing? If you're still breathing, then there is still hope. So you know what? Faith pulls me into my future. Hope empowers me for now. Faith is the future, but hope empowers me for the reality of what I'm going through right now. I like what John Maxwell once said. John Maxwell once said, sometimes the greatest lessons learned are on our way to someplace else, a place we've never been before, a, a business we've never started before, a song we've never written before, a book we've never authored before. You know what? On our way there, we learn some of the greatest lessons. Now, I'm not teaching you this series on hope because I've mastered it. No way, Jose. I'm teaching you this because I'm going through some things right now also. And if you're going through some things, if you're on your way to something, why not enjoy the journey? The best way to enjoy the journey is to take notes and stay connected to the Bible. Stay connected to God's Word because it is through God's Word that you'll get directions on how to get from here to there. Some of us take wrong turns. Hey, don't be afraid to stop and ask for directions. Ask God, how do I get from this place where I've made a wrong turn to the place where I'm supposed to be? The word hope actually means intend with some possibility of fulfillment. That's the mindset that you want to have. You want to believe that where you are going is possible to fulfill. The destination is possible to reach. Now, we need to raise up an army of hope fillers because the situation, the, the, the truth of the matter is this. We don't live in a hopeless world. There's just a lot of people who need to be filled with hope. A lot of good people sitting there like lame ducks. All we have to do is fill those people with hope, and guess what? They will be on their way to fulfilling their destination. You know, when something is broken or something is sick, our main concern is usually, is there any hope left? You take someone to the hospital, and, and, and it seems like they're not going to get better. All you want to hear the doctor say is, we still got hope. Even if it's a 50-50 chance, we just want to know, is there still hope? If you take an appliance, maybe a refrigerator or a TV or something to get fixed, your only concern is, okay, I'm going to pay labor costs, but is there any hope? Because if there's no hope for this appliance, we may as well dump it and get a new one. So, is there still hope? What about me? Some of you single people might be saying, I'm not getting any younger, and yet I'm not hitched yet. I don't, I don't have a boyfriend. I don't have a girlfriend. Listen, being single doesn't mean that nobody wants you. It just means that God's still writing your love story. And so some of you might be saying, what about me? I've been praying for a long time and still no answer. Can I share this simple thing with you that I learned a few weeks ago? God answers three ways. Number one, he says yes and gives you what you want. Number two, he says no and gives you something better. Number three, he says wait and he gives you the best. So whatever it is that you've been asking God for, I want you to hold on to hope. You know, there's a story in the Bible, in Ezekiel 37, it's the story of the dry bones. This is where Ezekiel finds himself. It's a vision that he has, and he finds himself in this valley of dry bones, and God asks him what I think was a trick question for Ezekiel. He says, hey Ezekiel, see all these dry bones? He says, can these bones live again? Well, you know what? We need to applaud Ezekiel because I like the way Ezekiel answered God. Ezekiel said, God, no one knows but you. No one knows but you. And so God then responds to Ezekiel's intelligent answer. And he says, Ezekiel, speak to these dry bones. 
Call forth the breath. Call forth the winds from the west, the east, the north, and the south. And Ezekiel did it. You read it. It's an incredible story.